Hello and welcome out online's live and exclusive coverage of Race of Champions 3. Thanks to Extreme Sim Gear, Direct Clutch Services and Derek Spears Designs. I'm Stephen Sandman Clark. Normally fill, I'm filling in for Jay Kennedy who's normally sitting in this seat, but tonight is uh, slipped into the driver's seat and is taking part in Race of Champions. Should be great to see how this race unfolds. Joining me in the, co in the uh, commentary box tonight is Corey Slade. Corey, good to have you back in the commentary box, mate. Yeah, cheers, there, man. It's good to be back. I um, I love these events. I mean, I would have loved to have been out there with with Jay and the boys, but um, up here in the commentary box, I think it's probably the best spot for these events. <laughs> You're not wrong. Uh, sensational event, and uh, the man behind the scenes, uh, and a big thanks to Chris Tarrant, who's joining us in the commentary box to tell us all about it. Chris, welcome to VH Online. Thanks very much, Sam, man, and uh, G'day, Corey, and uh, hope it's an, uh, another big night, big night in front of us. Now, there's a lot of people who really know. Uh, there's a lot of uh, speculation on what car and track combos, but you can probably just let us in on, on what race we've got coming up right now. Sure, definitely. Uh, going to be a tough race, this, this one. Um, we're certainly going to see the, the men from the boys. Uh, we've got the Impala Class B NASCAR. We've got it on the, on the road track at Zolder. So, like I said, a very, very tough car. Uh, the setups setups were done a couple of weeks ago prior to the new time model update, so it's a little bit loose, but like I said, we're, if we want to find out who is the best of the best, this is, this is certainly going to do it, so it should be, should be great. And mate, you'd be fairly chuffed. Uh, no doubt uh, every 13 weeks your inbox gets absolutely flooded, I would imagine, with people who want to take part in this event. You must be pretty proud of it. Yeah, certainly am. Uh, with the Australian Day holiday this weekend, or the long weekend, I really thought I'd be scratching for numbers, uh, hence a couple of tracks are a little bit smaller grid size than the usual. We normally, I normally aim for tracks around that 45 grid slots where at the moment we're about 38, but yeah, that over 60, 65 applicants. Uh, 65 applicants, already have got the nod, so we've certainly certainly got plenty of people keen on it. So and and also with the directly uh, Derek Spears design coming on board as well, so it's it's quite a quite a recognised series now, and a lot of people viewing and watching and want to be a part of it. So it's it's really really good. Yeah, you, no doubt you got a lot of people helping you out behind the scenes. Is there anyone you give a, cheer, a cheerio to? Sure, definitely. Yeah, obviously the guys at Direct Clutch, uh, Extreme Sim Gear. Uh, Simon from OSR or Oceanic Sim Racing, uh, and also Derek from Derek Derek Spears uh, Derek sorry Derek Spear Designs. Uh, he's come on board uh, this year and or oh, this Rock Race of Champions of Three, and it certainly Rock Rock Four looks even better with uh, with a lot more people interested in in being a part of the series. So, but particularly them guys, and obviously you, yourself and Corey for for the broadcast. It's what adds adds to the event and uh, really looking forward to it uh no worries mate we we are just as excited as all the drivers involved it's a brilliant event uh, you've got to be very proud of it um no doubt it's something that everyone looks forward to every 13 weeks now we're assuming you're a busy boy so we probably should let you get back to all the behind the scenes stuff to get tonight uh, off and running okay yeah appreciate that i'll get, get back into the into the action but uh Certainly race one is going to be a corker and race two is going to be off the hook, I promise. So uh, there's going to be heaps to talk about. Appreciate your time, Chris, and we look forward to possibly chatting with you a little bit later in the evening. That's good. Good call, guys. Thanks, mate. Uh, obviously, no doubt, uh, a brilliant race. Uh, these guys are going to have their hands full. The Chevy Impala NASCAR around, uh, and Zandvoort, uh, the Zolder, I should say. Um, a brilliant car. Uh, these guys are going to have their work cut out for them. 450 horsepower, and these things weigh vicinity of 3,400 pounds, that's sort of uh, 1,600 kilos uh, in our terminology, so um, should be good fun. What do you think, Corey? I think it's going to be fantastic. I mean, all the guys that um, that have run the V8 Supercar here have said how slippery it is. So, um, you know, you chuck a, a thing that's supposed to go around in circles, I think it's going to be fantastic. So, practice underway, we've got um, qualifying coming up shortly. Um, and then these guys are going to get into it. It's a brilliant race format, something that excites everyone that takes part. And, um, you know, I'm very jealous of uh, Mr. Kennedy, who we swapped seats. It was, uh, it was my turn last season, and uh, it's his turn this season. So we're going to also have a chat to him as the night goes on, too, to find out uh, his thoughts on how his night's going, too. So we've got some time, we'll just uh, we'll go on board with um, Shane Van Gisbergen. 
give you a good chance to check out the guys breaking markers and uh, give you a good feel about this, this circuit. Yeah, this track has got this track's got some really tight chicanes too, which you're seeing on board here. And tell you what, I reckon this is going to be absolutely fantastic having these guys um, rubbing bumpers and really getting stuck into it tonight. <laughs> you're not wrong. I think one of the things that people haven't taken into consideration is that um, these things are great on ovals, uh, a little bit of a handful on road courses because uh, after a couple of laps, the old brake pedal seems to get a bit long and the tyres go off fairly quickly because of how heavy these cars are. So. From uh, from our point up here in the commentary box, Corey, I think uh, we're going to have the best seat there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you you took part in the uh, truck race, I think it was at Watkins Glen last last race champion, Sam. So you know exactly what it's like to take an oval car <laughs> and make it turn right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, they um, they certainly um, get your hands uh, hands full at times and um, fingers crossed. We've got great drivers uh, that take part in this series. All all know what they're doing and um, it's going to be brilliant just to see how these guys cope with the, the way the car changes over the, um, over the coming laps. Now we spoke about before, we swapped seats with um, Jay Kennedy. Jay's decided to jump into this big 3,400 pound beast and we'll see if we've got him online. Jay, you there mate? Yeah, I got you boys, loud and clear. Now you're going to have your hands full tonight buddy, uh, wrestling this big 3,400 pound NASCAR. Your thoughts on it so far? really loving it. it's a machine to drive it's very very loose in the setup and really tough to control but uh special livery for me the boys have painted up this week so i've got the big giant l plate on the bonnet <laughs> do not overtake turning vehicle on the rear so if anyone ramps me around a corner it's their own fault <laughs> i can't be blamed because there's signs on the back and that's the law i love how he's getting all these excuses out of the way now so we can oh, say i told you so now. later I know it's all my fault later, so it's okay. <laughs> now, it's early in practice. We've still got 12 minutes to go, so uh, we won't bother you too much with qualifying when it gets to the serious point. But um, what are we, 16th on the timesheets, mate? So I think you can wrestle a little bit more out of it. Oh, I think I might have to swap your places to get any more out of here, man. That's um, <laughs> actually a PB already. we really got Madison coming up behind me here. I'm no doubt give me a tap as soon as he knows that I'm on. Yeah, he knows Talking you're on camera. To you now. Yeah, <laughs> he'll give you a serve. It's actually something we haven't touched on. Um, we weren't sure that Madison would actually make make the race because of um, family commitments, and he was a bit, bit of a busy boy the last um, couple of days. But um, he's rushed home and uploaded his um, his rig, and he's ready to go. So it's good to see. Yeah, it's good. Great colour drivers out here. We've got quite a few real life pro drivers. We've got some real life guys that do a lot of amateur stuff as well some of the best sim races in Australia and the world out here, so I don't know how I've ended up in this field, but we'll push on anyway. <laughs> now, have you done many laps around here at the moment? What was that? Sorry, I just missed that. Have you had any had any laps around here you know, as far as leading up to tonight's event? Is it a track you're uh, familiar with? Did a little bit of practice uh, in the V8 supercar coming up for that race uh, during the last season, but didn't actually race here, so it's a weird debut here. But it's a slightly different track to what we saw at the V8 as well. Um, the last chicane has actually been taken off and we just straight line that chicane. So, gonna have a lot of guys. Oh, I've locked it up here. Ignore that chicane. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll have a lot of guys, a lot of passing at the final corner and there'll be some bump drafting down the front straight, no doubt, with the guys up the front. I'll get to have a look at that when they come and lap me. <laughs> All right, mate, well, we'll let you get back to it and we'll catch up with you a little bit later through the telecast. You've got about six more minutes left in, um, in warm-up, I believe. Is that so all? So, good luck, mate. I need more than six minutes. <laughs> all the best, champ. Have a talk to you guys. Soon. Thanks, mate. Yep.
All right, so coming into tonight's race, um, obviously um, we've had past winners. This is uh, number three, Justin Ruggier, uh, a previous winner in the past, and he's no doubt looking forward to, to claiming that crown again. Yeah, some of the some of the racing we've seen over the past two Race of Champions has been absolutely outstanding. I think if we go back to Race of Champions 2 between Muggleton, Christian Allwood and and, um, and Ruggier, it was just, it seriously provides some of the, the best racing. You chuck guys in um, in cars and tracks they'd never drive and I, I swear it just throws up some of the best things we'll see for the next 12 weeks. I think that's a bit that everyone loves, the secrecy behind all this that, um, you know, no one knows the car and track combos until one hour before the race. So I think that's brilliant that everyone doesn't get a lot of behind the scenes testing and everyone's just pretty much thrown in the deep end, which is just sensational. Yeah, I kind of wish the bit, it's a bit car series like that. I mean, we get good racing in that, but, you know, you can't beat it when the guys have come out. They've got an hour, an hour to get their head around it and, um, and then give it all they've got. I think it would provide some fantastic stuff in the V8s. Now, we've just had a quick look at uh, Muggo's car. He's um, proudly carrying the number one on the door after um, claiming ROC2, which is brilliant. And, um, yeah, he's, he's been talking a lot this week about he'd love to keep that for, for the next one for ROC4, so I think we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, he's definitely going to um, have some competition with the, the likes of Christopher Osborne, who's currently on top of the times, and his teammate Madison, Richard Hampstead's in there, Deep Pasquale's in there. You know, there's a long list of drivers that definitely want to have the number one on it for uh, Race Champions 4. Yeah, probably somewhat of a bit of a surprise at the moment. Shane Van Gisbergen, who cleaned up the iRacing uh, version of Race of Champions, um, he's sitting in ninth position at the moment, and uh, our other V8 supercar driver in the field, Scott McLaughlin, He's currently P13, so these guys have probably just taken their time to get used to these car and track combos. They're probably not used to these sort of things. Yeah, and you know they've been uh, with the off season. They've been pretty busy. I mean, got McLaughlin just obviously signed that new deal uh, for the V8 Supercars next year, and, and Shane's off racing a whole bunch of categories. So they haven't really had much time for sim racing, unfortunately. And I think they've been missed on the grid by, by all the drivers who regularly run in the Monday night top split. Yeah, you're not wrong. We actually, actually uh, fingers crossed, we have uh, have a bit of a chance to talk to Shane Van Gisberg and, um, in the lead up to race two, which will be which will be good. We'll be able to have a chat to him. He's obviously had um, an interesting off, off season and um, he's recently signed a deal to race with Techno Autosport, Autosports for um, 2013 in the V8 Supercars, which is fantastic. So it'd be good to chat to him and find out. Um, it'd be good to see him actually back in the V8s for for 2013 in the iRacing series. So we'll be able to have a chat to him and find out what his plans are as far as his iRacing commitments. Now, an interesting turn of events too. This race is just a flat out sprint race, no pit stops, but um, that hasn't been ruled out for, for Race of Champions because, um, you know, they are, I believe, maybe going to be throwing in a pit stop or two, but no one's actually, nothing's been quite confirmed. So we're not quite sure if um, we have to have pit stops later on for, for the next race or even tomorrow night, which is exciting. Another thing to remember is uh, back in, I think it was Sunday night of uh, Race of Champions 2, the safety car came out to play and that really threw a couple of guys off guard and we had the reverse grid. So you, you never know what Chris has got up his sleeve. Yeah, that's actually a good point. I'd forgotten about the old safety car. That's, um, yeah, brilliant thing to think about because uh, these cars can probably spread out uh, fairly quickly with, um, you know, there's a bit of a spread on the timesheet. So Anton Di Pasquale has gone P1 at the moment with a 129.8 and uh, Damien Butler back in 34th is a 138. So there's quite a spread with the times. It's uh, in the vicinity of 10 seconds there. So I'm... Um, yeah, uh, it could be interesting to have a, uh, a chase car or two thrown into this equation. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, Chris has really put the challenge down. I mean, when you guys ran the NASCARs on, at Watkins Glen, that's something that, you know, relatively simple sort of track and something that uh, the NASCARs do obviously run in real life. This thing is, a, this track is very, very technical, and I can only imagine driving a car like this around here is going to be hell. So I think we might see the time spread a little bit... Um, now, a little bit wider than what we'd probably like, but I think we're going to see a lot of mistakes and a lot of um, a lot of passes from drivers trying all different things in the race. 
you have so many unknowns and just because you're fast and out front doesn't mean you're going to stay out there you know we've seen we've seen a little bit of contact in the past at roc races which has always made things a little bit exciting but um yeah just because you're the fastest on the day and you're out front doesn't mean you're going to stay out of trouble warm-up time is quickly running down now we're gonna have a 15 minute qualifying session after after this and Deep Pasquale is still on top. The only guy to go under the 1 minute 30 barrier into a 129.885. Christopher Osborne doing a ripper job up there in second, followed by Shane Van Gisberg and E3 with the 1 minute 30.232. Yeah, this next session will be rather interesting. Like I said, 15 minutes for this qualifying session, and then we'll take some time out as they reset the server and uh, get it all run up and running. So. Exciting times for these guys. If they haven't quite got their head around it now, it's um, it's going to fall a little, in, little bit too late category because uh, this session's finished and they've only got 15 minutes for qualifying. So we're in for a ripper of session. Yeah, well, if you cast your mind back 13 weeks, the qualifying session at Watkins Glen was absolutely out of control with drivers battling to find uh, find clean track. And it's definitely, I mean, something that I think the V8 Supercar Series lacks. The fact that we have one qualifying session, you've got to go out there and give it your best, and you've only got 15 minutes to do it, unlike all week, which we normally have. So I definitely think uh, this is going to be, be interesting, and it could sp uh, throw up a surprise pole, pole getter. I was looking at everyone trying to run out of the pit lane. <laughs> it's exactly what I was going to touch on. There are so many people trying to fight for a position out of pit lane. Uh, everyone wants that clear bit of racetrack, and uh, there's so many cars in this field. So um, we're in for a ripper of a session just to see if these guys can get a bit of clear, clear track. Watch now, they've half field have managed to get out of the pit lane, but now they're all battling for uh, a bit of clean space. There's not really anywhere here I can think of that uh, any draft is going to um, benefit you. I know in uh, past races that at some tracks like Spa, it has um, has played a role, but I think here it's going to be all out. Just just give it what you got, and you know see where you end up. And you can see these guys using the same sort of idea as they carry across in the V8 supercars. Just go easy on that first outlap. Um, these things, because they're so heavy, um, they are fairly brutal on their tyres. So it will pay into their hands to be a bit of an advantage just to go easy on that outlap. But um, I'm, I'm really keen to see you get this session underway. It's going to be interesting to see uh, who advances um, up through the order because no doubt... Um, Sometimes in practice sessions, you, you're just trying to learn your way around the racetrack, or sometimes you get balked on a hot lap. So I don't think that those times are, are too far off what qualifying might be, but it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. Look at now, some of the guys have got a nice little spread and, and starting their hot laps. Looks like Richard Hampstead's going to be the first guy to go out there for a flyer. And he, oh, sideways into turn one. You know, just as the practice session uh, wrapped up, it was Madison Down who went fastest overall, 29.2, um, 29.270 over Anton Di Pasquale at 29.8. So there's only two drivers that dipped into the 29. So watching Richard now come into this little chicane. This is a tight little bit of racetrack, and if you hit that uh, that inside curb wrong and he's sideways there as well hit that inside curb wrong and I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see a car flipping through there in the, in the race or qualifying at some point because you can get some serious air <laughs> you've put up the challenge now it'll be interesting to see. <laughs> make sure everyone stays on all fours just have to go and watch Jay mate I'm sure he'll do it for us <laughs> you've cursed him already mate you've put the jinx on him the commentator's curse Richard. Richard's now has got uh, the alternate last corner, which is a lot faster than what these guys are used to when they ran the V8s. But he's going to come to the line and he's going to post the first serious lap time of the session. 1 minute 30.060, so that would have put him in third in the warm-up. So Richard Hampstead straight on, uh, straight on pace as we go to quality. Now the on screen, Josh Muggleton, proudly carrying the number one on that TTR hype simulator NASCAR. Um, 
he was so excited about claiming the win last season and um, he's pretty keen to keep number one on the door, I think. I believe fastest uh, driver in this session now, Shane Van Gisbergen with the 29.513. As we ride with, uh, we check out Mr. Kennedy. Let's see how he's going. Looks like uh, he's on a hot lap at the moment. And he's past that chicane, thank you. He'd probably save it for the race for you, mate. Have to get a, a nice director to uh, get a nice little in-car permanently fixed in there for the race. <laughs> <laughs> he's been real excited all week, uh, ever since we wrapped up the last round of the V8 Supercars. It's all he's spoken about, so it's, I think it's good that he's um, He's having a crack, having a red-hot go. I'm actually very jealous, sitting in the commentary box. Very sideways, like he locked his into that hairpin, and yeah, I, I know what you mean. I, you know, I've, uh, I've unfortunately missed all three races of champions now, and I've just been dying to get out there every time. But you know, real life things have, um, have popped up, which has, have meant I can't make it. But uh, you know, it's probably better to be up here, ain't it? a little bit safer. <laughs> Jade does a 133.788. On screen, Scott McLaughlin comes around, crosses the line, and he puts down a 30.831. That's good enough for uh, P7 at the moment. Times have already picked up uh, from from qualify, uh, sorry, form up from uh, some of these guys. Uh, you, you have to think that maybe they've, they were just sitting there and you know holding a couple tents in there and just waiting for qualifying to show their true speed. Chris Osborne on screen, who is uh, he's on his hot lap, hasn't posted a time just yet. He found himself uh, P3 in warm-up. His fastest time for the session was uh, 130.199, so the first car out of the 29s. Ooh, he oh, gets a really? bit of air through the chicane. I was going to say, really hit that inside kerb pretty hard. Yeah, they're not, all falls, though. It's not very forgiving of V8 supercar, so I imagine these guys will have their hand full. Oh, as Chris has all sorts of worries coming into the braking zone there, and aborts that lap. I just got spotted a glimpse of Jay in the wall there. On screen, Christian Artwood. P9 so far in this session. 131.144. His last lap round looks like he's ready to uh, post down a quicker time. He's on an outlap, yeah. Geez, how, how fast did this session go? We're already uh, halfway through. Uh, it's only a 15 minute session, so um, these guys need to get on with it. As we hear that uh, Madison Down's gone to P2, uh, 129.786. So. Quickly and consistently, you get straight into the 29s. It's good for Madison. I'm getting reports that uh, Scott McLaughlin is still back in 11th place on the grid. So, probably would have expected him up the order a little bit more. Um, fastest guy in this session so far is Shane Van Gisbergen. It looks like Scotty's having a lot of fun out there driving the thing sideways, but um, you know, I think sideways might be a little bit slower here. It, it is, like I said, from the Vet Supercar sessions, uh, all the drivers reported had very low grip, so I might have to get out there and have a go in this car a little bit later tonight <laughs> because it looks like a blast. Let me join you. That's the first thing I said to Mr. Kennedy. I said, I think after this I'll be shooting into a session just to have a red hot go to see what it's like. Oh, he's sideways out of the second chicane. This looks like he's struggling to um, get the power down. 
cars don't appreciate is if you overexcite the rears too much and get too much temperature in them. Um, I know that's sort of uh, a bit of a fact with a lot of the cars here in iRacing, but especially these things, because they are, uh, in, in actual fact, a heavy race car, that sort of tends to carry across into the game too. So you need to be a bit uh, easy on the throttle with these things. Oh, he's so easy to the second last corner. <laughs> Held on to it too. So currently P12 in this session. Let's see what this does for him. A 130.279 puts him to P7. Now on screen, Formula Ford Ace, I believe, Anton Di Pasquale. Finds himself in P10 at the moment. Looking to a list like Richard Hamstead now is coming to to finish his lap, I think. See if he can get any gains. Sorry, no way we ain't going to start it. Current fastest is a 1 minute 30.060. Oh, now just as we were talking there, Muggo's gone to the top of the time sheet. It's a 129.2. It puts him in P1. So Muggo will be very happy with that lap. Yeah, and, and that'll match Mattis' time from the warm-up, so... Yeah, he's done a he's done a very good job, and he's found a bit of time on his um on his warm-up time as well, though. So, like I said, I, you, you just have to think that uh, some of these guys maybe held just a little bit back in, in the warm-up to not give away their true pace. So on screen now, we have supercar driver Shane Van Gisbergen. Finds himself P3 at the moment. 29.513 is his fastest for the session so far. And fingers crossed a little bit later on, just before um, practice or during practice for the next uh, race. Shane's going to join us in the commentary box and we'll have a bit of a chat to him. So it'd be good to catch up with him. I know he's, uh, he's had a busy off season and uh, no doubt he'd be fairly excited about uh, 2013. Yeah, for sure. He's got a lot. He's got a lot going on in uh, in the real world this year, and, and a lot, like I said earlier, a lot of other guys uh, are probably hoping he returns to the V8 Supercar Series because you know a lot of them really love to uh, to race against him when they beat him. That's um, that's a real high point in their sim career. Bang comes to the line now, 129.027. Oh, that'll grab pole. We were just about to comment that Madison had grabbed provisional pole, but that will put uh, Shane Van Gisbergen on pole over Madison down. So on screen now, uh, a driver that you know fairly well, Corey Renz Brookman, finds himself P4 in the session so far. His fastest lap so far is 29.652. Perfect time, is it? Uh, timing, rather, as we uh, switch to him, he, he pulls over. <laughs> it's always a way. One of the XSG drives, Matthew Barron, going off at the, the same point as soon as we... Uh, Flick over to them, so. Yeah, it's at that point now. We've got about what, two minutes 40 left in this session, so I think the guys realise that, that if they're not on a, a decent lap now, it's best just to quickly bail out, do your soft, your slow out lap so you can get on with it and uh, hopefully post a time uh, before the session wraps up. So that's at the stage where we're at. Had reports that George Maris has gone to... Uh, to P5. He's another driver that was very, very quick in the V8 supercar that's kind of disappeared over the last season or two. So it's good to see um, names like Maris come back for events like Race of Champions. Definitely one of the uh, the quicker guys out there. Yeah, P3. Uh, sorry, P5. Um, another one into the 29. So it's exactly what we were talking about earlier. The guys were just finding their feet with this car and racetrack combo and um, you know, when practice was around, it was only sort of two guys that were in the 29s. Now we've got sort of the top five or six drivers in the 29s, which is brilliant. Come back at Justin Raggia. I mean, I'm not sure I'm getting any uh, timing glitch, but I don't actually have a time for um, for Justin. 
recorded yet, and he's only got a minute and a half left in this session. <laughs> oh, wow, that, yeah, you're right. That's exactly what, what's showing for me, too. He hasn't posted a time, and if he keeps this up, he'll find himself dead last. So that um, that could be a real worry for him. He's probably on the tail end of a hot lap, as it looks like he's got a bit of pace behind him here. So he really needs to make this lap count. Yeah, he's looking like he's really on it. He wants to make sure he doesn't run too wide and get an off track. Comes to the line. Does he finally get one down? He has a 129.368. Oh, straight to P4. Nice work. He gave everyone a bit of a heart attack, though. Languishing down there in the um, in the 30s. Kind of good job there to move himself up. That would have been scary coming to the back of the pack in uh, in this race. <laughs> You're not wrong. Madison down on screen. Cuts across and goes fast as a 28.677. Grabs provisional pole with 40 seconds remaining in this session. Well done. So who else is on a fast lap? McLaughlin's just starting his. Struggling a little bit too at the moment. Down, back down to 13th after moving his way up a little bit earlier. Yeah, he was, he was inside the top 10 in practice. So, um, I mean... You know yourself, uh, sometimes it's not easy to get a clear lap in and uh, it's easy to make a little whoopsie and have a bit of an off track, but um, looks like he's on it now at the moment. Another driver also out there on hot lap is uh, Richard Hampstead, so just trying to keep an eye on those that can possibly challenge the pole time. Ben Gisbergen's coming into the, the last couple of corners now, followed by George Maris. But Van Gisbergen's got a little two sideways and called it quits as now Maris is going to come to the line. They improve. No, no record time there, so. Now yeah, joining us in the box, uh, Mr. Kennedy, mate. Uh, qualifying looks like starting P30, is that correct? Yeah, it looks like it. We're actually back to 30, P30, I think it is. Not actually coming up on our screen, so it sort of makes it a bit hard to know what we've actually done, but yeah, uh, hard work out there. Yeah, 33076, your fastest lap so far in qualifying. Um, yeah, you're going to have your work cut out for, buddy, for you, buddy. Yeah, well, I said before coming in, aiming for a top 25 in every race. So if I can do that against this amazing field, um, I'll be pretty happy. But it's hard out there. It's uh, pretty crowded and not much space to get a lap in. Going to have to uh, pray to, to Chris. He does a, pulls a little trick in and maybe does a reverse grid for you, Jay. Reverse grid every race, and I'll start from pole. <laughs> now, there's your qualifying results on screen. We don't have them right in front of us, unfortunately. We've had to pick our way through the um, through the qualifying laps, but um, I can tell you that it's Madison down on pole, 28.6. So, great lap for him to be into the 28s, just, you know, with, with only an hour's practice. So, not a, jo not a bad job for these boys, and uh, they're going to have their work cut up for them. I believe it's 16 laps around here, so... And you're going to be, um, you're going to see all the action, Mr. Kennedy. Yeah, I'll be in amongst all the action. Just hope everyone can see the old plate and doesn't blame me for crashing into them when I take them <laughs> out. So, just hope you guys help me out with the commentator's curse. Yeah, well, I think Corey's already had a shot at it so far. So, no I, doubt I did spin at one point. I thought Corey might have been talking about <laughs> me. No, I um, just stay away from the first chicane curbs, mate, and uh, don't end up on your roof, and you'll be right. He's speaking from experience, or...? <laughs> no, that's what he's already cursed you, I think. <laughs> uh, how, did you find that, anyway. how did you find that session, mate? You only had 20 minutes warm-up. Did you feel a little bit more comfortable as that uh, last you know, few minutes of qualifying died off? Yeah, coming up into the race now, I feel a lot more confident than I did before. So, um, it's definitely going to be a tough race out there, and uh, the calibre of drivers in this race, uh, it's amazing, so... Uh, looking forward to it in a couple of minutes' time, but yeah, it's going to be good fun. I'm sweating really bad. It's, I didn't <laughs> think it was that hard. Uh, we're sitting here, be nice and comfortable. You know, air-conditioned commentary box, mate. You get thrown yeah, in thanks. the sweaty race car. Yeah, looking forward to uh, sweating it out even more. <laughs> Actually, interesting to note in that race there, a couple of guys have actually had to drop out due to the weather conditions in Queensland and well, New South Wales at the border there. So, unco unlucky for a few guys that are actually going to miss out tonight due to weather. Yeah, you're not wrong, and uh, you know, all our thoughts go to everyone who's um, yeah stuck with those unfortunate conditions uh, at the top end. I hope everyone stays safe, and uh, yeah, it's a shame everyone's you know there's a couple of people missing out with weather.
So we'll get the qualifying results to you as soon as they come to hand. But uh, brilliant race. Uh, you know, these cars around this uh, racetrack, um, it's going to be an interesting to see how it all plays out. You know, we touched on that um, just because you're the fastest up the front uh, doesn't mean you're going to, you know, obviously walk away with the win. So, you know, we've seen contact in the past with Racer Champions and, um, you know, interesting format. And uh, I think this car and combo, uh, car and track combo is um, it's going to be an interesting one. I can't wait to see how it all plays out. Yeah, it's definitely going to be good. And I'm, you know, I'm just sitting here, you know, possibly thinking about what Chris might have, have up his sleeve as well. So it's, um, even though you've got the uh, the main guys out front, it's definitely not the way it could stay. I think it was the, the NASCAR race, last last race champions that got turned on its head and, and the reverse grid that had some um, interesting feedback from the drivers. <laughs> yeah, the, the truck race at Watkins Glen, the, the old reverse grid um, threw a bit of a curveball and... Um... Yeah, it certainly played out a lot different to what uh, a lot of people expected. But um, hey, I mean that's that's half the fun with um, with ROC. You never know quite what to expect, which is um, which is brilliant. That's funny for uh, for Chris and all the boys to sort out the grid and the and the service for the for the next race. Now, Iron's gone over a bit of a, an update now that it's uh, week 13, and um, I think one of the most exciting things, especially from our point with the V8 supercar, is the, uh, obviously, we've got a, a bit of a new um, steering mod update as well, but um, I think the biggest biggest improvement is the sound, and Corey, you got to sample that the first time this afternoon. Your thoughts on it, mate? Yeah, I, I, I got on and quickly plugged the headset in and, and loaded it up to make sure the sound was working, and... And I got a nice little surprise when I went to the TV cam, the V8, and all I've got to say is, wow, that, that thing is seriously, seriously awesome. And I can't wait until round one when we've got, you know, 25 of those cars screaming at us off the uh, off the start line. It's seriously some of the best sounds I've heard in any kind of video game, in you know, in anything, whether it be shooters, racing games, whatever. I've never heard something that sounds that realistic in my life. And the bit I love, they've, they've gone to the trouble of, you know, you, you hear the whine of, of the gearbox the transmission, the, you know, and you, you've got brake squeal and everything in it too. So it's it's just, just such an improvement over over what we've had in the past. And um, you know, our racing seems to outdo themselves every build, which is just which is brilliant just for the members. Yeah, it, it's it's good. it's fantastic. They've really um really done a good job with the latest build. And I've got to say, anyone out out there listening right now, make sure you tune in next Monday for the uh, the live broadcast because when you hear those cars for the first time, I guarantee you, you'll swear you're sitting at the racetrack and you know actually living it in um in the flesh. Now, just bear with us as we wait for the server to pop up, and then these guys will be underway. No doubt, some nervous drivers. And uh, how are you sitting there, Mr. Kennedy? You you ready to rock and roll? Yeah, just check the grid starting from 30 seconds. So, uh, got a little bit of work to do to reach my goal, but it's just come up now. So we'll join. We've got a 10-minute practice session before um before we're into it. Hopefully, 10 minutes is enough. <laughs> <laughs> We're just getting a couple of messages through some of the drivers. Uh, Nathan Britton sort of uh, poked me and he's, he's, he's let me know that uh, he's a little bit nervous possibly about this race, which is, it's funny to I'll see all these guys. I'll give him a little bit of a shunt. <laughs> I'll give him a shunt now that he's uh, left the team and uh, spray painted his car. So Yeah, we saw that. What's all that about, mate? Uh, he's just moving on teams uh, next season. He's feeling like a bit of a change of scenery, so running... Fisher is joining the Powerbond Racing Team, which is, uh, we've seen Rob Hartley in the top split for that team. So he'll be hanging out with those guys next season. It's an always interesting night when we, we call it silly season, where there's a bit of driver action with swaps and everything else. But um, oh, they say sometimes change is as good as a holiday, so it'll be interesting to see how it works out. But yeah, he's got the old spray can to the, to the car, and he's uh, done a bit of graffiti work, we see. Yeah, same as we saw Hammer do that last season with... Uh, the direct clutch guys put um, a bit of spray paint over the top of his livery to uh, <laughs> let everyone know he's moving on. But yeah, so 
he'll um he'll be moving teams, but not a lot of team movement for next season in regards to the the V8 supercar. So we won't see a lot different in regards to top split team wise, which will be good because it's going to make it easier for us to work out who's where and who's driving what car. Got a rolling start too, guys. So as we start on this uh, this session, we're just uh, getting ourselves sorted. Uh, I believe rolling start for this one. So yeah, that's interesting, isn't it, Mr. Kennedy? Uh, that'll probably help a little bit back in uh well where you are yeah i was actually worried getting this thing off the line wouldn't be easy so rolling starts definitely a big advantage um yeah i don't think i want to do a standing start in this car <laughs> there'll be uh there'll be one guy out there that'll be cheering this is a rolling start reese garner i know <laughs> reese garner <laughs> watkins glenn last uh last race of champions was an absolute disaster for him trying to get that uh that truck off the line So just as we join the session, we'll quickly run through the grid and let you know the order for race one, race of champions three. Such a brilliant, brilliant series. Um, it's turned into somewhat of a, a tradition now with the, the unknown mix of cars and track combos. It definitely gets uh, everyone excited for the end of a V8 Supercar Championship. And um, you know, we spoke to Chris earlier saying that just how flooded his inbox gets with um, with um, you know people wanting to take part, which is brilliant. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it's unfortunate that some tracks do uh, do limit how many people you can have because I'm sure this grid would be more than double if we could uh, if we could um, accommodate four of them. So, but uh, Chris has done a good job at you know selecting who you know who's in these events, and we have a um, a great a great lineup of real life drivers and sim racers and all kinds of people and. It's like Jay's having a fun time out there. <laughs> oh, I just caused a massive crash, so sorry guys. <laughs> just checked everyone up and uh, Reese into the wall who hit Chris, who hit Justin, and they all got air and wow, that was cool. All my fault. So I can admit I'm at fault. <laughs> <laughs> when it doesn't count. Now, just having a bit of trouble, I can't seem to see any um, grid positions on my screen either, so um, yeah, I'm going to have to wing it. I was going to, I wonder if this is um, another one of Chris's little secrets. I mean, I'm still sitting there thinking about that reverse grid race that really shook it on its head at Watkins Glen, so have to wait and see. Only a couple of minutes now until we'll, uh, until we'll jump into the race and know, but what about you, uh, Stephen? Do you think there's anything uh, Chris might be doing for this race? Oh, mate, you exactly touched on it, mate. There's been that many curveballs that we've had to deal with over the over the races. Um, whether it be a full reverse grid, it might just be a top 10 reverse grid. I mean, you know, we've thrown in safety cars. So I think it's, um, yeah, it's definitely an interesting format. And, um, yeah, he could be playing games again because we can't seem to see the grid order, which is um, making us think possibly a reverse grid. Yeah, like you say, if it's not a full reverse grid, maybe a reverse top 10 or 15, which in itself would be uh, very interesting. So we've got just under three minutes now till we're going to grid up. Guys going through their final checks and making sure everything's, everything's okay. Be interesting to see how these cars cope over 16 laps. You know, we spoke about how how quickly sometimes the brakes and that go away in these things because they're such a heavy unit. But um, 16 laps, and uh, you know, I hate to say it, but there may be a fair sh <laughs> have its fair share of carnage too. So, um, you know, just because Jay's sitting back 
down towards the back end of the grid doesn't mean that he's going to finish there. If he can keep his nose clean, um, you know, he may um, walk away with a fairly decent uh, finishing position. Well, another thing is, I mean, these guys do one minute thirties around this track and over 16 laps, you know, if you're in the midfield or towards the back, it might even be worth a gamble to, to jump in and take fronts or rears or all four tyres and, and go back out there and push hard uh, towards the end. I mean, if you've got nothing to lose, I think um, it'd be good to see a couple of guys try it anyway because they could be big winners depending on the on the drop-off on these tyres. And from experience, uh, on the oval side anyway, they, they tend to go off a fair bit and there's no compulsory pit stop uh, for this race as far as I'm aware. Yeah, that's right. No pit stop for this. Um, 16 laps. It's just a flat-out sprint race. But, um, hey, I mean, if we get a, um, a safety car, uh, you may find some of the guys down towards the back may dart in and, and grab a set of tyres. Who knows? Definitely. Even some of the front guys. I mean, if you're sitting back in fifth or sixth, I know it's a big grid, but if you're out there on fresh tyres, it's just such an advantage, especially for those first few laps. And there's going to be quite a few passing opportunities here in these cars. And, so I, um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see anyway. What do you think, Jay? Is it something that uh, could possibly happen, or is it laying just too long here? Uh, I haven't actually thought about it, so now you've given me something extra to think about. Um, <laughs> I can't see a lot of guys doing it if it happens, so uh, it'll be only a select few. Definitely going to be a long race, so 16 laps in a car that, that breaks worse than the V8 Supercar. We complain about how long the V8 Supercar races are. This thing's worse under brakes on a road course, so going to be rather tough but I'm looking forward to the challenge. Now Bruce has just been handed a, a sheet of paper with qualifying results which is brilliant. Uh, Madison Down finds himself on pole fastest time with a 28.678 over Josh Muggleton P2, Shane V and Gisbergen in third, Justin Ruggier fourth, Renz Brookman in fifth place, James Stevenson in sixth, Mitchell Abrell in seventh, George Morris in eighth, Richard Hampstead ninth and Anton Dispec uh, Di Pasquale on P10. We flip over to 11th is Christopher Osborne, Christian Arwood in 12th, Matty Barron in 13th, Scott McLaughlin, long way down the grid. Probably expected him to be a bit higher. He's in P14. Uh, Marlon McMullen in 15th, Cal Watmore 16th, Benjamin Rossberg in 17th, uh, Matthew Nethercote in 18th, Justin, now I'm going to get this name wrong. I can. It, Guarantee uh, it. Is it Justin D. Domenico? Is that probably said it wrong? Domenico, I think. I'm not 100% sure. And <laughs> I apologise to him now if um, I get that wrong during the race. I think I already have, but we'll just call him Justin. <laughs> yeah, the cars are gridding up now, too, by the way, and it looks to be all A OK. -okay. Just got nervous and sweaty all of a sudden, guys. I don't know why. <laughs> Rolling start too, mate, so you don't have to belt straight away. A bit worried, though. John O'Barry behind me. We've had a little bit of a laugh and a bit of rivalry over the last couple of hours, so uh, I'm expecting a little bit of a love tap into turn one. <laughs> now, the one interesting thing, too, with um, ROC this season is there's a, a bit of a teams championship as well, so... Uh, it's not all all loss if you if you tend to have a bad race and don't finish in the pointy end because um, there's team points up on offer. Yeah, and it doesn't uh, actually makes it harder on the bigger teams because it goes by the average result of the full team. So uh, we're going to try and get all of our guys up towards the pointy end. So a big team like us in XSG or ANZ, we're actually at a disadvantage if someone DNFs. So we'll be trying hard to make sure we all finish the race at least. So the car's away from the grid, rolling start, and it's in a TTR all front row. That's pretty impressive. Uh, Madison down, on pole, over Josh Muggleton. So these guys will be fairly happy with the results so far, but it's early days. Um, should be an interesting turn one with all these cars uh, barreling into that tight left-hander. Uh, it's going it's to be an absolute blast. I see 35 cars come screaming into that, uh, that first left-hander. And just on a note of the, uh, the the lockout, we've got an all A and Z lockout on the second row as well. You go back to, to row three to find the first um, first drivers that uh, from a mixed team. Who's your money on, mate? It's probably one of the most unpredictable races we'll see all season, with so many top drivers in the field and uh, so much, you know, unpredictability with the cars and the track, but. Uh, 
Who would you put your money on, mate, if you were a betting man? Oh, well, it, it's hard to say. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a normal grid, which surprised me a little bit. So we have to know that Chris has got something going on, surely. I mean, he's not going to um, make it easy on these guys. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to um, I'm gonna go back and say someone like, you know, Christian Alwood, Matthew Barron, Scott McLaughlin, somewhere, some guys back in, you know, that sort of uh, 12, 13, 14 position, they might be able to stay out of the carnage up front and get through it and... Like I said, I just think that there's something going on. I, I can't see Chris <laughs> making this too easy on these boys. <laughs> All right, uh, Jay, we better let you go. There's about half a lap to go for this rolling start. All the best, champ. We'll talk to you a little bit later through the race. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you during the race. And uh, make sure you curse whoever's around me and make them spin out so I can gain some spots. <laughs> Stay out of trouble, Tiger. Thanks, guys. What about yourself Brilliant. there, Sam, man? Just quickly before we go to the start of this race, who's your money on? Oh, uh, look, I'm going to have to go with my team boss. He pays the bills at uh, TDR. I'm going to go with, um, with Madison, Madison down. But um, I'm really interested to see how Scotty comes through the field. That's going to be really interesting. Another guy we haven't really mentioned, though, this is going to sound a little bit to me, a team wise, Friends Brookman, making his debut in Race of Champions. And race of Champions, rather, and we're just about to take the green flag. Safety car pulling off now. Yeah, it looks like a green flag. They're underway. The guys have got their rolling start, and it's Travo. It's close up the front. Josh Muggleton and Shane Van Gisberg are diving up the inside. A little bit of contact maybe there with Muggo. But Shane, very aggressive at the start. Great driving. So these guys are getting into all these laps. Looks like Shane's having another go up the inside. To the double right handers and. These guys in the mid-pack here are rubbing panels and rubbing doors, and it's absolutely crazy. And don't forget, Shane had a successful stint in the Race of Champions, the iRacing um, hosted session. Um, he took that up against some of the best drivers in the world, and uh, no doubt he'd be looking to back that up. He, he drove really well in that and uh, won two years straight, and now it's his turn for ROC. Anton Di Pasquale has had a huge moment into the, uh, into the first chicane. Oh, someone else off into the fence too. <laughs> Looks like maybe we're getting reports it was Ben Rothberg that fired oh, off into the fence. We've got a car around at the second chicane as well. There's a, there's a traffic jam there as everyone takes the sand now to get around it. Looks like Marlon McMullen and Matthew Nethercott involved. They're going to drop all the way to the back of the pack now after qualifying nicely in the, in the middle. Yeah, we touched on it. Looks like... Um, it was the hardest bit is just to get to get through and miss the, the action, but you see when the guys all stack up, sometimes there's nowhere to go. Oh, we've got another car around, sorry, uh, Sam and James Stevenson, who was in P6, has gone around at the hairpin. We've got cars going absolutely oh. everywhere on this first lap. We've got a car around the last corner. Oh, we've got two or three cars in the fence. Last corner. But like Cal Watmore's involved. Anton DePasquale is involved. Matthew Barron was in there. Christian Noble was in there. Christopher Osborne's got big damage to the back of his car as well. And while all that's happening, we've had a change for the lead, but now it's gone back to the way, and now it looks like Shane Van Gisberg is going to grab the lead again. So Gisbergen took the lead, down took it back, now Van Gisbergen's leading again. At least top five have pulled away from everyone else. They've got a nice three, four second gap back to the next car, Mitchell Abril, who's done a good job to survive all that. And Van Gisbergen takes a lot of curve through the chicane. So much action. We've got carnage through the field. We've got swatches for the lead up front. It's unbelievable. I was almost about to say, it was all very calm for those first uh, <laughs> few corners and then we got to the middle and there was just absolute chaos. So we'll quickly go through your top order. It's Chain Van Gisbergen over Josh Muggleton, Madison Down, Justin Ruggier, Renz Brookman in P5 and Mitchell Abril in 6th. They have, they've opened up a bit of a healthy margin and Scott McLaughlin, who looks like he's into P8 p7 now so he's really made his way through the field yeah, he's done a good job avoiding the carnage but he's, he's already almost 10 seconds off the lead it's just as big moment it's going to let Renz have a run on him now around the outside though into turn one not sure if this is the spot you want to be in Justin goes in deep the best bit I love about this is these guys aren't familiar with these cars. They know that how to push a V8 supercar and they know the limits of the V8 supercar. Like, oh, I'm right near Sobeys again. Looks like Muggleson had a problem further up as well because he dropped the spot to Madison. 
Uh, Ruggier is absolutely ringing this car around this track at the moment. We touched on practice, these cars don't really like to hang off the left rear or the right rear tyres because if you overheat them, they do move around a fair bit. But um... Got Madison, I think that was, having a big look up the inside of the kink into the second chicane on Van Gisbergen. They're all bumping uh, nose and tail into there. So we're making our uh, director jump all over the place, but this is absolutely chaos whether you're in first or 35th. The one person that I love with this battle is that uh, Mitchell Abra will be looking at this going, you beauty, there's a bit of a five car battle here and he's making up the ground while these guys are all fighting it out. He's done a good job, he's definitely reeling him in, but got McLaughlin who's uh, as we said up to seventh place now, he's ten seconds off the lead already. Out there by himself actually. Looks like Madison down now, having a look around the outside of Van Gisbergen. Yeah, it's hard to look away from this front battle and there's five or six cars. Oh, we're getting reports that Kennedy's gone round. Jay Kennedy has gone round. Yes, he's facing backwards at the uh, at the hairpin. Not sure if someone else was involved there. <laughs> Getting a bit of a report that uh, he made oh, to that all by himself. Another car off, sorry, Stuart Woods off at the final corner now. He's uh, just got on the grass there and lost it all by himself. Oh, this race had it all, only three laps into it. <laughs> the guys have still got 30 laps to go, it's scary, isn't it? I wonder how these tyres are holding up. Justin Ruggier and a whole bunch of guys for that matter are absolutely just ringing this car around this track. I, feel, I really feel sorry for the uh, for the rubber underneath them at the moment. But this battle up front, it's just hard to look away from, as he said. Madison down and Van Gisbergen really going at it. And Mitchell Abrell now, he's caught right up to him as he has a moment, but he's caught right on at the back now of uh, almost of, of Renz. Yeah, Mitch sitting back watching these top five battle on out swapping positions. He loves that because it just it brings him, you know, it brings them all closer. As well, Madison down runs a little bit wide in the hairpin and that gives Muggleton a bit of a look. So these guys are going to run. Looks like muggo has got a bit of pace here. Will he try and have a look up the inside of down? No, it thinks better of it. These guys got to be careful. They don't want to mess around oh, too much. Oh, oh good sideways. Over exciting the left rear. Holy smoke, lucky not to fire that into the fence. But you can't afford to mess around too much because with Van Gisbergen with a bit of clear air, he could clear out on these guys. So it's one of those catch 22s. You try and battle for position, but you don't want to let the leaders get away too much. I guess that's one of the uh, one of the good things about being teammates. You need to work out who's faster to catch up to Shane now and you know not have too much of an inner team battle. And looks like we've been joined by Jay Kennedy. Mate, Jay, in the fence, uh, second hand. What happened, yeah, buddy? Met the, met the fence at the final corner. We have a up. bit of problems there. We've lost nah. him. Oh, am I there? Oh, we can hear you, mate. Yep. Yeah, it's found the box of neutrals. Ah, we apologise. I'm having a bit of technical issue trying to hear Mr. Kennedy. Kennedy. This back paddle. So like, uh, Chris Tarrant, may we're getting reports he may have had a bit of a, a cut track penalty. Maybe he's finding himself back in ninth place or tenth place. Sorry. Now up front, we touched on it a little bit earlier that uh, Shane Van Gisbergen, with these guys battling out and a bit of clear air, he might find himself with a bit of uh, a lead, and that seems to be growing. It was one second last time they crossed the last lap. Let's see if that changes anytime soon with Madison down in P2, 1.6 seconds now. So slowly but surely, they've got to be careful not to let uh, Van Gisbergen walk away with this. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they've, uh, they've settled down a little bit now. And, and like I said, they're teammates, so they need to work out what's the fastest way to do this if, uh, you know, Josh just lifts off, lifts off rather and, and stays behind Madison. But he's also got to be mindful that he's got Justin Ruggie right behind him. That's, uh, you know, nipping at him and it's definitely going to be interesting to now to see if they can close up uh, that gap to Van Gisbergen because it's proving that clear air is um, definitely much, much faster here at the moment. Nice little battle on green, Nathan Britton and Matty Barron. Uh, well, we can say ex-teammates now uh, with the off-season, but um, these guys having a nice little battle. 
The car's moving around. You can see Matty Barron really sliding around a little bit. Trying to stay in the draft. Maybe have a look up the inside at the chicane. Yep. See no team orders. Now he's thinking about firing up the inside. No, things better on it. Yeah, that's it. You know, if Nate gets a bet car, I don't have to pay for anymore, <laughs> mate. So Matty's under instructions to go for it. <laughs> go for the win, bugger. And a nice little, a little bit further, George Maris, David Hinston, Marty Atkins, a little bit further back from that pack, but uh, nice little train that these guys have got for, a, for a, a bit of a position game. Yeah, looks like George Maris is working his way back through the pack now after a bit of an incident in the first oh, lap. Oh, he's up the inside! Up the inside of, uh, of Hinkston there. Nice job. It was very controlled compared to what we're used to seeing. Check out that move up the inside. Nice bit of driving there as he just breaks up the inside of that hairpin. And we're getting a bit of a uh, report that there's uh, some damage to the back of Osborne's car. No doubt these guys run a nice close nose to tail action. Just back up front, Madison Downs now cleared away from uh, from Muggleton and reeling in Van Gisbergen. Rugg is still right behind Josh and it looks like Renz had a slowdown now, so he's he's lost off uh, the back of that little pack. Yeah, lap 7 of 16. These guys are starting to spread out a little bit. Uh, you know, we touched on a little bit where the, the tyres and brakes probably start to give away a little bit uh, in the first part of the race. So that's probably what these guys are starting to experience at the moment. reports maybe something's happened to Matty Barron. We'll try and uh, find out what's happened there. Was in 14th position last time round. Can't see any back on my replay, but he just lost a bit of time. The guys he was battling with. And Sean Kelly's on the move too, mate. We're hearing he's got he got his job done on on Chris Osborne. You got me there, guys. Yeah, we can hear you now, buddy. Sorry, Jake. Yeah, just, got, uh, just caught up move. to third and fourth. We've got to move you on. Great on. battle. Justin Ruggier and Josh Douglas are really into it at the moment. Oh, they're really hitting those curves hard through the chicane. But these two these two battling has allowed Madison to catch up to Shane Van Gisbergen now and you know, reignite that battle. And it won't take long before these two catch back up to those two as well when they start going at it. Yeah, Shane, something must have happened with Shane because his, his margin was almost two seconds last lap round and uh, Madison's right there now. Well, it's very easy to get a slowdown at this track as well through the chicanes. I mean, if you go in there a little bit too aggressive, trying to push that a little bit harder and, and get that gap out a little bit more, um, it's easy to just drop those wheels a bit further than you're supposed to. And that, you know, that'll cost you a couple of seconds uh, for sure. Someone who's fallen off this pack is Renz Brookman too. He finds himself uh, a little bit off this train of cars. So you're probably going to think if, if nothing unforeseen happens, that the winner may come out of this top four. A nice little move up the inside. Ruggier oh, gets the job done. In. Straight up the inside of Josh Muggleton. So Ruggier getting the job done there. It's a good move if you can get it done. You carry that speed straight down that that front straight near pit pit, uh, pit entry, and um, if, you, if you're brave enough under brakes, you get the job done. That's exactly what Ruggie did. Yeah, the good thing with these cars, I mean, you can get in there and, and push and shove a little bit. We've seen the NASCAR boys do it, so no harm done to either of these two. Oh, Van Gisbergen up front. Sorry, Madison down, going around the outside. Oh, that's brave. Madison's oh. gonna got the inside now. If you can hold onto this. What a pass. Can he pull it up though? Can he pull it up? No, yeah, he does a good job. I was waiting for Van Gisbergen to do the old under and over on him, but um, great battle between these two. Oh, he gives him a shove. 
that's what we that's what we're used to. In, there's no rules in ROC. Um, obviously, want to be a little bit gentlemanly, but he's just letting him know that he's there and he's not going to give it away too easy. So Mattis is definitely going to have his hands full. Makes you wonder if uh, Ben Gisberger maybe overheated his tyres a little bit in those opening laps, pulling that gap. And they're broken up into twos now. You got these leading two, then you got um, third and fourth, and I think Renz, who's lost a lot of time after a couple of slowdowns now, and Mitchell Abrell's just behind him. It's turned into a bit of an ANZ TTR battle, hasn't it? With uh, Down and Gisbergen flying the flag for their teams, and then Ruggier and Muggleton doing the same back there for third and fourth. I wonder if maybe we'll go further back in the pack now, David Hingston. Oh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a brave move firing it up the inside there. <laughs> you can see some of the apologies. Uh, I know you probably not, uh, you know, a lot of people can't see what some of the driver text is, but there are a few apologies floating around the place. So lap 10 of 16 around Circuit Zolder. Uh, these cars have probably gone past their use by date as far as tyres and brakes, but it's Madison Down leading over Shane Van Gisberg and Justin Ruggier, Josh Muggleton and Mitchell Abrell run out your top five. They so, well, run through that pack a little bit. You, you can tell there some of the cars out there um, definitely in need of some new front bumpers, rear bumpers, and doors. Also, Van Gisberg now right up on the back of Madison Down again. Yeah, just get reports that Muggo's just fallen off the pack a little bit. I don't know if his tyres have gone south on him or if he's had a cut track penalty. The thing looks like it's moving around a little bit and um, you know, just got passed by Ruggie our last lap round. Madison's very wide in turn one and it's allowed Van Gies working along the, along the outside, trying to get the over and under here. Madison's sideways into the corner. I love how these things are moving around. These guys have really got to work for it and make sure they don't get too much throttle oh, in it. Van Gisbergen looks up the inside, gets the job done. Now, will Madison try the over and under? Madison he wants got to have a, a look up the inside, run. but Shane's going to block. He holds his line into the chicane. Oh, we've got a car off ahead as well. They need to watch out for through the chicane oh, there. A nice bit of air there for Van Gisbergen up on two wheels. Yeah, that's oh. going to come into play, isn't it? A bit of lap traffic in front. Yeah, Desmond Hallam, he's coming into a bit of a tight section as well, which is going to be interesting to see how we get through this one. Oh, just got out of the way. Nice bit of work there by Des. I love how these cars are moving around. They're really squirming under brakes, and you can see the guys have just gently got to get on the throttle. Someone who's loving this action up front is Justin Ruggier. That's slowly pulling him into this uh, this top two battle because they've broken away a little bit. Bit of a gap there between Van Gisbergen. A little bit further on the pack. These guys are battling it out. Nice little battle there, Damien Butler. It's a fair bit of damage. I think these guys, the panel weeders, are going to have their work cut out for it after this race. Yeah, like I was saying, there's a couple cars out there that need some new rear bumpers, front bumpers, some new doors. It was definitely, it was just absolutely chaotic. Those opening few laps to get into it, into the chicanes, into the hairpins. Boys were really leaning on each other. It's really spread out now, though. Have a look at this battle between Richard Hampstead. Sean Kelly. Probably expected uh, Richard to be up a little bit uh, higher on the grid too. Very pacey in the V8 Supercar Series and uh, finds himself P8 at the moment. Got his hands full there with uh, Sean Kelly trying to re reel him in. This battle back here with Butler. He's got his work cut out for it, trying to move around the outside. That's hard work there. These tyres will be fairly second-hand. Butler's got the inside. So what? Brooks has done a fantastic job to hold on around the outside. Actually got the job nice done. Nice work. Well, yeah, well done. That was a long pass. We managed to get it done. 
But now Butler's got his hands full. Reese Gardner would be there pretty keen to get the job done too. But uh, Butler hasn't given up yet. Nice move by Brooks around the outside though. Like Rick. We're getting reports, uh, yeah, Osborne. Chris Osborne around in the 33. May have had a bit of contact there. Oh, Maris looked like he lagged out a little bit. Unfortunate there. Yeah, I wasn't sure if that was just on my end or not, but uh, unfortunate for Osborne to, you know, come off to... We've all we've all had it happen to us, but um, you know, the lag moments come off and sometimes, unfortunately, a bit of net code contact. Yeah, just have a look up front. Uh, Shane Van Gisberg has got himself a mighty little lead. Looks like almost to the point of two seconds there over Madison down. And but Madison's got his hands full with Justin Ruggie, by the looks of it. I was about to say, Justin's really starting to uh, close into Madison now. Muggleton's fallen off Ruggier as well. Oh, a nice little oh. battle back here. Butler and Reese side by side. Oh, a little bit of contact there, maybe. Around the outside, oh. Reese Gardner. What a pass. You're paying the bills for that one, too, Corey. <laughs> uh, they tell what. Damien's done a good job to hold on around the outside there. We we'll just apologise. We were watching a bit of a replay as all that action was starting to happen. But uh, Damien Butler's holding position now over Reese Gardner. But nice little bit of side-by-side -side action between those two. So we're now live pitches with Damien Butler. And Reese Gardner. This battle isn't over. Reese is fairly keen to get the position. This is all back for 20th and 21st. Yeah, you'd think they'd be battling for a podium position the way some of these guys are getting stuck into it. We check through the field. Hingston got himself a uh, bit of a battle on his hands. So we're getting to the business end of the race now, lap 14 of 16 at Shane Van Gisberg and over Madison Down, Justin Ruggier, Josh Muggleton and Mitchell Abrell, your top five. But, uh, well, we've certainly seen our fair share of action and a lot of passes and uh, it certainly hasn't been a, a dull race. Uh, race of Champions has lived up yet again. Yeah, it's been fantastic. Those opening laps were just absolutely crazy with guys... And we're hearing that uh, Damien Butler and Reese Gardner have had a, a bit of a coming together. Like Butler's slowing on the... I don't know what's going on here. Clayton Brooks also involved. Got Butler and Brooks parked. Oh! Got... In front of the leaders there, Clayton Brooks and Damien Butler. Across the race, it looks like they... Um... Yeah, it looks like uh, might have had a bit of uh, net dramas there, but... Um... Unfortunate for those guys, having a great battle back there. Number of cars caught up in that wreck. We've got a great little battle here. Mike Coral of Christian Oldwood and Matthew Barron. Oh, back something, the 19th. Some, sorry, something's happened up front. It's now Madison Down leading over Shane Van Gisbergen. So we've had another change and we've only got two laps to go. I wonder if there's been a slowdown somewhere. Oh, no. Sorry, that was, uh, going back on the replay, that was the lapped cars that I was talking about in front of the leaders. Butler and, uh, and Brooks have... I think put Van Gisbergen off guard there and he's completely missed the last corner and had to take the chicane, losing lots of time. There's a bit so of teamwork for you. You just <laughs> boss, uh, put, put you off for the last corner. So he falls right into Madison's hands. It's lap 15 of 16, a lap and a half to go. If he can hold on, he'll take race one. But uh, Shane Van Gisbergen's been very pacey all night and he'll be... Quite keen to get that position back after a little bit of a distraction caught him out and uh, missed the turn. But um, he's got right to the back of Madison down now. He's having a look up the inside. Yeah, you'd have to say, he's definitely got the most pace out there of anybody at the moment. And this is going to be one exciting last lap. Between here he goes. Got a look at the pace. Look at the pace great he's got run. here. Yep. Will Madison, will, will he hold not his gonna, line? It's not no. going to defend it. Shane's going to shoulder up the inside in oh, turn one. Oh, look at it. Under brakes. So guys moving around. Gets the job done. 
This is the last lap, folks. 16 laps around here, and it's all coming down to this. It's a three-way battle between Madison Down, Shane Van Gisbergen, and Justin Ruggier. Well, we've missed that, actually, there. Ruggier getting past Mogelson at some point. But uh, up front here, Madison now has got to try and stay with Van Gisbergen through some of these corners. Looks like, got, looks like they've got some lap traffic oh. up ahead, too, which could play, play into, their, into uh, Madison's hands. They're going to Madison. pull over. Yeah. Lucky, I was going to say, if Madison looks up the inside, it might be trouble because they've got some slow lap cars here. They move right out of the way, which is brilliant to see. Great sportsmanship by the guys. They know that the leaders are coming. And it's the last lap, half a lap to go. Shane Van Gisberg, and can he hold on? Who's going to go for that dive up in the oh, hairpin, it's Madison? Moving around. And the brakes was all over the place there. Coming up now, it's probably one of the last key overtaking. So we go on board, on board with Madison down. Look at the back of Shane Van Gisberg. And He's got to shove it up the inside up here, surely. Then Van Gisbergen drives down the middle of the road oh. and they come to it. <laughs> here he goes, he'll be a little bit of a love tap maybe, no? This that is the last be. chance, last chance if he's close enough. Looks like he's not close enough to fire it up the inside here. You're going to have to hope he gets a good run for this last little chicane here. He's, oh, he's closing All it over massively. The back. Contact, contact! Will he hold on? Oh, Madison moves around, but it's Shane Van Gisberg. It takes out race one for round, race of champions three over, <laughs> over Madison down. Justin Ruggier in P3. Josh Muggleton will hold on for fourth. Right behind him is Mitchell Abril for fifth. What a, what a race. Yeah, that was fantastic. There was action from, from the, uh, the green flag <laughs> to the check-in. Got guys like, fighting it out as they come to the line. Looks like Renz Brookman finishing sixth. He's blown his engine. Scott McLaughlin holds on for seventh. Richard Hampstead eighth. Sean Kelly ninth. George Maris tenth. Chris Tarrant eleventh. Nice little battle on his hands there with Christo Osborne for twelfth. And a bit of fun at the end there, taking each other out. Like Jay's doing some lawn mowing now on this final <laughs> lap as well. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> Well, what a race. I mean, uh, we had our fair share of incidents. We had so many battles for the lead up front. Uh, oh, now we get to gather our breath and uh, do it all again for race two. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. It's uh, Homestead in the, uh, I think it was, did you say, there, man? Uh, we'll get word from our director in a second. Uh, it's Homestead with the legends, so that should be uh, should be interesting. Final cars coming to the line now. That was an absolute cracker. So we'll quickly run through the order again. It's Shane Van Gisbergen, a brilliant battle all race long with Madison Down P2, Justin Ruggier in third, Josh Muggleton fourth, Mitchell Abroy in fifth, Renz Brookman in sixth, Scott McLaughlin seventh, Richard Hampstead in eighth. Sean Kelly, ninth. George Maris, rounding out your top 10. Over the page, it's Chris Tarrant at 11th. Chris Osborne, 12th. Justin D. Gnimenko, I'll get that wrong, so I apologise, <laughs> Justin. Nathan Britton in 14th. Dave Hickston in 15th. James Stevenson in 16th. Marty Atkins in 17th. Matthew Nevercate in 18th. It's Christian Arwood in 19th. And Michael Koloff in 20th. 21st position to see Stuart Wood. It's Marlon McMullen in 22nd. 23rd, Matty Barron. Rob Leap in 24th. Corey Osborne in 25th. Then the cars that were the first ones to go a lap down. John O'Barry in 26th. Des Hallam in 27th. 28th, Reese Gardner. Clayton Brooks, 29th. In 30th, it was Damian Butler. Simon Black in 31st. Mr. Kennedy, P32. Unfortunately, four laps down, mate. We'll have a chat to you about that in a moment. Cal Watmore, P33, Anton Di Pasquale, 34th, and Ben Rothberg in P35. Jay, give us a bit of thoughts on uh, your run down of the race, mate. Well, I had four trips down the pit lane, so um, I guess I can't really complain too much with P32 from that. Uh, yeah, definitely not a race to remember anyway. Fair bit of action too. We saw it with so many things going on throughout that race, but um, yeah. Uh, certainly, uh, race champions lived up to a brilliant race finish and uh, and a lot of uh, a lot of drama on track. Yeah, it was action everywhere. It was great fun out on track. I had some 
good fun watching those front guys as they were coming around to lap me. As I said, they would. But, um, yeah, good fun. Had up on two wheels quite a few times through the chicanes, and I'm surprised that didn't damage the car. So I'm actually shocked a little bit a little bit in how strong the car is over the um over the bumps and the the uh, chicanes so good fun all right we're going to quickly wrap this up uh we're only minutes away from race two we've got the legends around homestead and uh we're going to have a chat to our race winner shane van gisbergen so stick around you're watching race of champions here on v8s online